I love popcorn. If it's there, I take it. And with lots of salt and butter. I, I'm not dead, I'm thinking. I don't like popcorn. Popcorn rocks. And it's healthy besides. I mean, these women just do it. I'm an A personality and I drive people crazy, but I'm so involved in so many different things, I don't drive one set of people crazy. I never take a nap. I'm not a nap person. No, we, know, we don't retire. You should know that by now. For me, it's, it's the mission that I support. These are the women who did everything the church needed to be done. And they did it with no money, with no fanfare, with no recognition. I have watched the Sisters of St. Joseph support my own sister's dream in saying, I want to start a school because there are kids who are not getting their educational needs met. And having the sisters say, We're, we back you, we're going to support you. For me, any type of organization that takes that approach uh, is worthy of a contribution. Donors and we recognize each other as kindred spirits. Every time I physically enter that community, the Mother House, and I am close to the sisters, I feel uplifted. I feel a certain serenity, a certain sense of joy, because I know I'm part of something bigger and better that I couldn't be individually, and I couldn't be without them. I'm Sister Joan Margaret Kunz. I'm a plate and fork lady, yes. I was a long time teaching at Nazareth College. I dealt with scripture as the basis of my teaching and reflection and sharing with the students. And now at St. Martin's, I have the possibility of putting flesh on what I had heretofore dealt with in a classroom setting. We're at Oaka Cemetery in Scottsville, and we're here because this is the pauper section. And I've been part of a six-year initiative to have people attend burials for people who have no resources, no family, or anybody. So it's been a very tender ministry. This is the ultimate, and I'm going to get crying, ultimate in ministry because nobody can say thank you. We can be free to go where the needs are and to serve, but we don't have the means a lot of times. So I just see it as a wonderful partnership. The, the, the donors who allow us to go where we're needed. When they ask you to help them with this or help them with that, of course you're gonna do it. it, it the current goes right through you. In prayer one time, it came to me that God was calling me to be like the fountain out in front, to bring the pure and refreshing water from in the earth up into full view. When I entered 57 years ago, there were over a thousand sisters. So now, you know, we're under 200. And sometimes it's, it's quite frankly, pretty frightening at times. We, we, need, we need help. You know, we want to continue our ministries. We want to continue our work as Sisters of St. Joseph. And we don't have as many people earning salaries anymore. We need help for the sisters who have helped us so much. Now's our time to help them. I send a monthly check. And every month I get a handwritten note uh, from the sisters thanking me for that. The energy exchange is, is amazing, and, and the only thing that I can really equate it to is feeling what it is like to be in the presence of someone whose entire focus is on God and is on love. They're the pure blue light. They're that, that flame that you don't even see because it's so deep and so strong. We have that line from the congregation, which is John 17, that all may be one. And are we not in a world that we still need that message? That when we see bias and racism and lots of the hate and anger that's going on in the world today, we need to respond to it. I'm thrilled to be part of a community. We struggle when we have our faults, but we really care about the right things. When you can see life happening around you because of the work you do, but beyond the work you do. 
It's just so right.